What is going on, guys? It is about to be week 18, playing in San Francisco, potentially for the division. Of course, we don't know if they're going to win or lose. They might be 13-3, and and based on tiebreakers and whatnot, maybe they would actually get the nod over us, even if we beat them, which I believe we already beat them, so maybe that's not even a truthful thing. But it is Madden, after all. I would not put it past them. Uh, this is actually the first video I'm physically recording past Christmas, like after Christmas, like two days ago now, and uh, yeah, it's good to be quote-unquote back. Obviously, I uh, filmed a couple of parts for that really long rebuild of the Bears. Maybe check that out, and uh, you know, that doesn't really count. Hopefully, you guys had a great Christmas, Kwanzaa, Hanukkah, Chinese New Year. I don't know when all of those things are. I feel like Chinese New Year would maybe be not on the same day as Christmas. I don't know, but whatever you celebrate, Hopefully you had a good time. If you got presents, hopefully you got all that. If if you're not, if you're like me and you gave more gifts than you got, hopefully you got you know the fulfillment there. You know, it's I think it's fun, just as fun, if not more fun. I used to be like, give me all my damn presents, but now it's like, I kind of have everything I need. I don't, you know, I try not to spend anything, you know, even on myself that I don't need. You know, it's, uh, I don't, you know, I don't need anything. But hopefully, you guys got everything you wanted, and you know, everything's good. That's all I can really say. Maybe I can get my own Christmas present here, though. Wow, they won though, with a win over San Fran. Perhaps, of course, if they would have lost that game, I think it would have given us a chance, perhaps, to win off of a tie. But they decided not to. Hot opponent and a rivalry rematch. Let's take a look at the potential players of the week. Which did not include us, sadly. The Packers, the Eagles, the Jets, and the Ravens. Wow, Zach Wilson's a god. Words we all say on a constant basis. When did Greer get two upgrade points? That's all I'm trying to find out. But that's what the offense looks like. This is what the defense looks like. Obviously, things probably will change drastically when the season ends. As we are going to have a dev regression on. Because there are some players specifically on this team that probably do deserve to drop. I will say we may fix some of them if it's because the game is dumb. Uh, but obviously, if that's not the case, they're going to lose their death. For the injury report, a lot of injuries on the San Francisco 49ers. They're starting running back. Their backup running back. Their potential starting left tackle is I think Trent Williams has been retired for a while now. And then their starting right guard, all injured. In this game, obviously, we are completely healthy, so a little bit of a nod in that category. As far as their strategy goes, uh, obviously, they like to run the ball, but can't really do that with basically no running backs left. So we're going to defend the short pass in this one as Debo is literally the leading rusher that's still alive. Trey Sermon even only had like 100-some yards. Uh, Tyrion Price, Davis Price, had literally under 100. It's absolutely insane as far as what we want to do to attack them. They've got a really good squad, kind of across the board. I suppose throw it middle. The offensive line has done a pretty good job this season, and you know the receivers have been pretty good themselves. Obviously, uh, we have been trying to get the ball to the rookies a little bit more. You know, Patterson and Moore done an okay job of that. Obviously, want to take a look at the uh, stats as well before this game, specifically the receivers. Just see if there's any milestones we might be able to hit. Uh, also, looking at the hot opponent, we'll do the hot opponent first, uh, just because it kind of seems like detached from reality a little bit. It's like, we know who the opponent is. Insult a I just don't think insulting anyone is ever a good idea, even if I feel good about it. Niners are playing well, and all players... Well, I guess it doesn't matter. We've just... Everyone gets like a billion points now. Said snap the streak. I'll tell you what, something's guaranteed to be snapped. So next, the streak, whatever... Let's go, fellas. They're going to be looking for revenge, so let's stay focused, play the way we're capable of, and once again, take care of business. And uh, maybe we get ourselves a bye week. No need to try and do too much out there, guys. We know what it takes to beat them. We did it once. Time to do it again. Let's get that sweep, boys. Complete the sweep of the Niners. Rinse and repeat. The Niners will have this game marked on their calendar. Their players will... I mean, isn't that already a thing? It's like plus 15. Their players are juiced. A plus 15 to break tackle. That's absurd. I think Trey Lance is like 92. Now onto the upgrades and Wosu, a guy that is a very good chance to get to 90 plus finesse, does it and gets a second ability slot being Adrenaline Rush is not 85 overall with 90 plus finesse. I think for our next episode, we're going to do stats and awards 
and we're going to do respins of the uh, abilities we have. Uh, I don't want to just make it the most overpowered abilities. I think maybe a guy like Kenneth Walker or Metcalf can keep their abilities, but you know, other guys, maybe lower overall players, shouldn't keep them. You know, I don't want to just have everyone with the best abilities because you know, just get them just because. You know, the game usually, I mean, even from real life, gives you some iffy abilities at times. Luke Marshall with a paw as 3 no awareness. There was a chance that that was going to be zone. Patterson has an upgrade. And honestly, even though they changed it to Playmaker, it's still a pretty busted upgrade. And we're going to go for it. Two to spec, one to short, medium, catching, break tack. I mean, eh, I guess. Like, there's no, like, proper route runner one. That's all I want is route running. Greer with two upgrades. Going to go with Improviser, which gives him... Wow, okay. Forget Improviser. We're going Field General. Not a 75 overall, but gets one to all of the accuracies. You know, putting them around 80 for everything. Short's obviously at 86. Uh, but he's our dude. Let's see if he can uh, get us a bye week with a chance to beat San Francisco for the second time of the year. Here we are in San Francisco, Sunday night primetime for the biggest game of the year either for either team, also in probably the league. I don't know if there's actually been a more important game in the last decade for Week 18, as you have two teams in the same division playing for the division but also the conference. There is no team within two wins of either of these squads in the NFC. So not only do you represent your division and guarantee a home game, you also guarantee a bye week, which is just astronomically high when it comes to the stakes in this one. Like I said, I don't even remember a game this important. And not just this important. You know, there's probably been some games where it's like, oh, maybe you get the number one seed if you win or whatever. But... Is it really, has it ever been like that where both teams have a chance at the number one seed in the same game and it's locked up? You know, week 18, it's all on the line here. You know, obviously you're still in the playoffs, you don't win, but there is a huge, huge L and having to come and play into the next game, you know, coming off of such a devastating loss, no matter how it actually physically turns out, is crazy. And, of course, almost as crazy as uh, the fact that Fanton Greer's touchdown in account last week. I, I don't understand what that's all about. I read some of the other comments as well, which appreciate them. They're really nice. I, I appreciate them a ton. Uh, regardless, let's get into this one as we are going to be receiving the ball first. Not a common sight for this team as most teams do actually receive the ball on us. And anytime we have a chance, we always decide to defer as Caldwell makes a nice move. And he's going to be taken down to around the 30. What a beautiful little return. And there's that man, Greer. The diamond in the rough. The gem. The superstar rookie with a 21 to 9 interception touchdown ratio. Opposite way. 3,600 yards. Pretty good completion percentage. Obviously, as of late, I will admit, numbers have uh, not looked the greatest. But overall, better than anything we've had here. Before he's joined, so we will take it. And also, I will take this lineup from them. They look like they're not ready for this. Let's see what we can do with more. And he's going to use that speed to gain a lot of yards. Trying to cut inside. Gains about 20 with a nice second effort. Sometimes it's not about how big you are, but how well you can trick them. You know, if you're looking like you're going to cut back, you get them off balance, and then you go straight head first. It's like, oh, hey, wait a minute. You know, then you just... Let's take that from there and we gain some extra yards as Fant finding about eight. We look, or six, we look really fast. Got a lot of moving pieces here. Kind of feel like Patterson's running into Metcalf here. And that's in behind. Nice throw. Good job by him to sit down on that. And uh, three for three from, the uh, you know, 38 yard line from the 32. Can we get Kenneth involved we probably could. I kind of want to see if uh, Patterson can get outside on that, though. Maybe he can, but Fant also very open. That release, amazing. Gained nearly 16 yards on the play on Greenlaw, who's obviously really talented himself. And do I really want Kenneth running right into a trap? I guess. It is Kenneth, after all. Spins. Maybe didn't need to, but avoided getting hit. And Israel Singleton... I believe is a rookie on their team, injured on the play. Patterson, once again, maybe he gets that outside push. 
And we probably could have just thrown it, but there goes Greer, and it's pain not being able to just run that in for the touchdown. But he was short, and I don't think he was going to get in there. And they do have a lot of players up here. Do you fade with Metcalf? Maybe opening up Kenneth anyways? Oh, that's a good bait. Kenneth cannot get a stiff arm or anything like that. And man, oh man, I thought he was going to blitz us. He dropped the moment he, you know, once he came up, he dropped. And that could have been crazy bad. But also looks crazy good for Kenneth here who will walk in. Not sure the, the idea there. I know it's tough with all those receivers out there, but you got to defend the run first and foremost at the goal line like that. But they didn't see it that way. And with that being said, we see a seven-point lead early on in this game after our very first drive. And speaking of very first drives, Trey Lance and the Niners coming out here for their first drive. Trey Lance with a 28-8 to eight interception, uh, touchdown interception ratio. Almost the exact same yards as Greer, but obviously the difference is Played the full season. You could say they run the ball a lot, but so do we. Kenneth Walker has more yards than, well, very close to their whole entire team. I know they have a little bit of injuries on the ground in game, but that also did uh, kind of happen recently, it seems. Just looking at the numbers and Price gaining about two yards there. You know, looking at the numbers, it seems like that Mitchell injury was very recent because, you know, guys like Sermon, who also seem to recently get injured, uh, don't have a whole lot of yards. Nice hit. On use check, it gains about two or three, but third and five, still trying to run the ball early and often. A little surprised by that, but we'll see what they want to do here on third and five. Mafia with the speed rush, but inside Debo, hard to get a handle on. Gains 11. Very clutch play there to extend the drive. Asking some of these corners to get a little wild out here. Of course, no Debo on the field, which, I mean, how many times do you really want to see that if you're them? Uh, they gain about four yards on the ground, though. He is still out. Did he get injured? He did get absolutely destroyed. Oh, we are burned. We got to get deep. Okay, that's fine. That's all right. Especially when Adam sneaks in there for the knockout. But yeah, it may appear that he did get injured. As I do not see him out there. Oh, we got to go against. Yeah. Oh, what a freaking defensive play by Wollen. Kittle may have been open for a big play there as we were laid off the line. Kind of got, you know, confused, mixed up, and... Trey Lance throwing that ball wildly. We'll take it, though, as this ball is also punted really shortly. It wasn't, like, high or anything. It just, it, you know, went right to us. Caldwell moving well in the return game, gaining, you know, about 13. Going kind of for a dagger a little early here with Metcalf across the field, perhaps. And we're not going to be able to get it there. You know, there's a couple of looks, but Greer for eight was the most guaranteed of the bunch. And with this many players down on the line of scrimmage, you're going to go with the play action. Might be a quick pass. It will not be. Oh, it's a little upfield there, but Metcalf comes away with it. You know, he's trying to get away from that corner who was kind of making a play, but at the same time, that ball kind of got away from us. Dangerous, but of course did not lead to any, uh, you know, bad plays. No drop, no interception. We'll take it. We'll just be happy. Up the middle, Metcalf. I mean, not even Metcalf. Kenneth Walker just doing his thing. I mean, that was about as buttery smooth as it gets. I mean, just chill. Cool as a cucumber. And, of course, it would be nice to get another uh, running back involved. But with this many players down on the line, we're going to go to the outside here. Rookie Moore gets about 12. No one within a five-yard vicinity of him, but still kind of led out of bounds with the throw. All right, block and release. And we're going to just dump this off to Metcalf. Is there's just nobody on him, of course. Not easy to break a tackle off of Fred Warner, but doesn't really need to. Gain seven. And I also don't think they can get over to Metcalf in time on this. Maybe they can. That's a little late of a throw to the fullback. Who stiff arms him and gets taken out around the 10. What a play. That's a big fella. Go with the read option here. This looks like a predetermined handoff, to be honest. And it works out. Kenneth with the strength. However, an injury for Xavier Moore. Once again, obviously excited about a huge 14-0 lead here, but at the same time, we're thinking about the bigger picture. All right, first and 10, and this Niners team, I was about to say before that play, is kind of looking lost on offense, but they gained 15 on the ground. Nice blocks. And Debo is back in. I don't know if he just needed a rest, but, oh, that's a pretty nice play. Kalen Barnes needing some help gives up four but yeah that was a huge hit and, and i mean that's when we stopped seeing him is the moment he took that hit i 
have to imagine that played a factor. And they're going to fake us out here. And with a missed tackle from Sydney, Richie James is going to get the first down to lead us into the second quarter. But once again, with a massive 14 0 lead, obviously we get the ball to start the game. But that doesn't change the fact that we still have two touchdowns and they don't. First and 10 from the 47. Davenport with the bull rush. Can't do anything about it across his body. Really good job by DJ Chark. Just body catching that on uh, our cornerback, I believe it was. Gain of eight. This kind of opens up some things if they want to do something, which they do. Quick throw outside to Kittle. It switches to the wrong guy. Mafe in coverage against him. Not a good look. And we take another injury. And we get punched in the head. With that Oliver always being hurt, though, I don't even mind him hitting him in the head. You know, wake him up. See what's going on here. Of course, we are not ready to stop the run, but nice effort from Davenport. We only gave up one, actually, and here comes a strained tricep. Will not return for the rest of the game. We will see how that impacts it as Ed Oliver, when healthy, which is not a freaking common sight at this rate, is pretty talented. Underneath, Shark gaining about six. Third and three, Davenport. I kind of want to see if Davenport actually has any juice. And another read option, Trey Lance slipping off of a tackle. Won't slip off of this one from Marsha, but is that Kalen Barnes again missing the one-on-one -on -one against Trey? Don't get me wrong, Trey's not some tiny dude. Kalen Barnes is, but I need better from him there. I mean, that's a huge play, blown little motion. They will actually hand it off to Debu, who finds a little bit of room. Gains about nine. And I don't know who Debu is. I, I guess it's Halloween. They're going to bring a very heavy front here. I don't want to run commit, but maybe we should. And good cutback. He's going to be short. Maybe could have given it to Debu there. Although I will say, not in on this play. Move him over. I barely got off the freaking coverage. And red dropped by Sydney. Perfect coverage on the out. Dropped. And this could be the saddest field goal attempt I've ever seen in my life. Not going to lie. I mean, we get a chance to get down the field, like, no matter what. But if you pin us, you know, just saying. You give yourself a chance to get the ball back as well in decent field goal range if you don't get it. That could be a deciding factor in whether they win or lose. Of course, I will say it doesn't help that they didn't retain Nick Bosa. Their pass rush is lacking in this one. As Caldwell just runs, gets to the 30. Speed. Pass game has been working, but we have all the time in the world. Be nice to try and get some of that clock moving as well. It's kind of going to get the ball first. Nice slip. Gets hit hard, but gains seven. Can't deny that we're not, you know, we're mixing the ball up really nicely here. Bo Melton's in on this one. As, of course, Moore is injured. And underneath, nice run into it for Patterson. Showing off some speed to the 50. 10 for 10 so far for Greer. Definitely picking up where we left off. There's no question about that. Could be a quick out to Patterson. Pre-snap, I liked it. Throws not great, but a great catch. Gives him seven. Not going to run against those two linebackers. Let us see what we've got for ourselves. And I was going to throw to Fant. We did have the underneath of Patterson, but Fant was wide. Insane pressure. I don't know if they brought the heat, but... That was kind of crazy. They're going to go with the press, man. We might be able to run it, but I don't like Fred there, do I? I'm going to run it. Screw it. And Fred can't get there. Walker finding some room. Looking slow there, though. I mean, we really haven't run him that much, specifically this drive, but looking, like, scarily slow on that. Well, action first and 10 from the 35. We have some time. He's open! Perfect throw, short to the two. Really, really good execution so far from basically everyone, especially Patterson. Some of these routes he's running are insane, and this looks like a straight-up handoff to, to Kenneth again, and it will be. And we kind of hesitated because I didn't think we were going to get it to the right there, and I think I like this to Metcalf. I like that to Metcalf. That's easy from the one. You expect it to be run. You put so many, uh, you know, resources there, and Metcalf just walks it. I, I just don't think the Niners are built for our team. Like, they just aren't. They're a team that wants to run the ball a lot. They want to run it up the middle. They want to throw it short, but we're physical. We don't allow teams to run the ball on us. We're obviously one of the best teams in the league. And, you know, when you can't do that as them, 
You know, I, don't, I just don't see how you're going to develop anything against us. Like, how do they climb out of a 21-3 to hole when they have no game past short, like, you know, yard line, you know, short yardage situations? Like, that's all they've got. They could pretty much bring the safety up every play if we really wanted to. That caught me off guard. Uh, uh, hello? Hello? All right, that's sweet. Oh, what a job by Davenport. Takes the shot and Woolen with the play. Wow, that ball went up high. I just thought we were going to go out of bounds. I tried to just quick pitch it to him. Didn't really work out that well. Yeah, that's just not going to happen. Trey Lance does realize that Woolen is six foot four, right? Like, I don't really know where that's coming from. Is that a touchdown? It's a little behind him. Metcalf will walk it. This could be a Super Bowl team. It very well could be. No, 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 Adams. Oh, what a hit by Adams. Nowhere to go on the ground yet again. I mean, they're down now 28-3, to and they continue to throw it and run. Throw it short and run. That's insane. <laughs> this is literally the definition of insanity. I will we'll say that worked out, didn't it? Nearly a first. If they can get themselves a touchdown before half with ball at half, I mean, they have themselves a little bit of a chance. But that right there, they definitely need to start hitting that more. This kind of like comeback type of routes. We were not ready there. Debo, nice underneath. Over the middle to Kittle. We miss hard. He tries to truck. 12. This will be their 10th passing attempt if they get the ball off, which is not good considering how many times they've had the ball. Huge hit by Barnes on Debo. That's not a common sight. We'll say this uh, kind of hurry up is working for him, especially since I keep getting stuck in the wrong players. Inside, Brooks misses. Price to the 34. Nice of them to slow it down for us. Of course, they call a timeout regardless, but nice of them to slow it down for us after they're already like in scoring range. Let's go with Davenport. Try to power rush, and that is a really good throw. Where is everybody? As Richie James finds himself to the 9. Really nice floater there. Yeah, I was about to say, I thought we had man coverage with Brooks on... Oh, what a move by Red. Oh, underneath. That could be a touchdown. It is. I mean, if they have that kind of potential, I don't know why they wait till the two-minute warning to hit that. I don't want to do anything too crazy, but I will say they have been giving us a lot of different looks throughout this one. Ooh, hoo, hoo, hoo. That, my friends, is a good bait. I'm not going to lie. Let's get this clock rolling. They've got one timeout left. At worst, we can take this to halftime with two runs. And they're not going to call a timeout, which, I mean, considering the success of that run, I understand why they wouldn't. Quick throw to Metcalf. Could be a bait out, though. Kind of want to get this to, like, 20 seconds in case they do stop us. There is nobody in sight. I thought the safety was going to come up a little bit more. I don't know what they're doing there. Timeout. I actually almost forgot to call timeouts because I was, like, thinking about, you know, how they're going to get the ball back. I was like, wait a minute. What are, what are you talking about, them getting the ball back? They might not at all because we're still moving. Bo Melton on the sideline, not going to get there. And that is going to be right to him, but dropped. We dropped a really bad one. They dropped a really bad one. We're all even. We are all even, and we can live with it. Can we actually get enough yards for the field goal here? You go to Metcalf, who is a rocket ship. You can, as he will take this to the 28 and give us a field goal. The field goal is hit, 31-10. to 10. They're ball at half. Lots of things can happen, but they are going to need a score right out the gate. If you're them, you cannot go with like a three and out on this drive. Like this absolutely has to be some sort of score. And at this point, I, I would argue probably a touchdown. Huge hit by Woolen. Five yards gain for Price. Get Adams moved over as this uh, right side of the field looks a little vulnerable for us as use check gets hit hard, gains four. I was going to blitz, but I think we're just going to, you know, if they want to run the ball, they can have it. I just don't think you can give up, you know, the, the huge touchdown. Look, if I'm there, I probably, I put up one really short route, and I put a couple of deep shots in there. You really need to catch us off guard anytime you can, because they, once again, they need quick scores. Over the middle, really good find. Can't get him with Sydney slipping off the tackle from Woolen, gaining a lot of yards as Chark. I don't know why they would ever slow things down. Their urgency is just good. They're very good when they're uh, when they're hurrying things up. Can't get off the block. Really good blocks from them and use check. Kind of taking Caitlin Barnes for a ride there for gain of about nine. Everyone up on the line as this is a second and one. 
kind of obvious run situation, but they don't. Puna Ford forces the issue. Trey Lance tries to run, but sacked by Davenport for a loss of three. Running kind of like an inverted cover two look. Oh. I'm going to try to pay attention to this with Adams. Underneath, can't get to him, and if he will be short. This would be their time to run it and trying to get over. Can't get off the block, but Kalen Barnes does, and Juszczyk can't slip him. Turnover on downs. And as much as I would like to run it, they look pretty upset at us. There goes Kenneth. Switching hands hits hard, but gains 11. Damn near a perfect game from Greer. From the 40-yard line, inside handoff, Kenneth gains about four, three. Not really the inside zone I was looking for, but I suppose, why not? And we're going to get outside here, cutting inside, slipping off some tackles, hit hard, gain six. Root option third and one. Let's see what the edge wants to do. And they want to give us the look as Greer, thankfully, doesn't fumble, gets the first. Touch pass for Kenneth. We like to see it. And he's got some speed. Nice stiff arm, gain seven. Let's see what Tanner's got. Second and three. The vision. Nowhere to go, though. If Metcalf doesn't get targeted here, he loses it in the zone. But, well, I guess you don't have to worry about it as he will be targeted. And he's going to be short. I think you run it here. Like you definitely go for it, but do you like the run? Streaks on fourth and inches. Now we're going to run it up the middle. And Kenneth's barely going to get it. Play action. We tried this earlier. They got some players up. Take this to Kenneth late, and that will be overthrown with the pressure. Oh, they're bringing the blitz on this run, but Kenneth slips it anyways. He's so elite. How do you gain five on that? It's crazy talk. Screen pass on third and five. It is to Fred's side, though. And he doesn't see it. We do sadly have to throw it up there, though, as Fred was kind of, you know, ready to swat it. We'll say that we wasted a good three to four minutes on that, and we get a field goal look, so... Pretty hard for them to try and win this one. 34 to 10. Present from the 25 yard line. Inside handoff. Brooks can't get there. Davis Price doing pretty well for them. It's just, you know, they're not really setting him or themselves up in the best of situations. Let's go with Wosu. Speed rush. Can't do it. Over the middle is use checking it about a first down again. Start of the fourth quarter. Let's see these numbers. Yeah, I mean, as expected, pretty much doubling them in pass yards. And, you know, they've had just as many plays as us. <laughs> they just haven't had sustained drives for scores. You know, they're running a lot of short stuff. Takes them three plays to get what we get in one. So, obviously, their yards are going to be pretty low in that category, especially when they're not extending drives. Debo, though, three straight first downs for this Niners team. Not really looking at this like a, a situation where they're likely going to win, but just kind of how can they finish it and how do we finish it. You know, I want to want to look good in these kind of situations we miss. Kind of got caught trying to just ba get back to the running back, and he took off right as we did that. It was just bad timing. Also, looking to stop the run in a pretty bad formation for us. You know, they should be looking to stop the run in this play, it seems. He's going to take the shot to Woolen, though, and Woolen's going to pick it. I really don't know what he sees there. I get Chark's big, but, like, are we winning the, like, pass run? Like, what does he see here? There's there's no chance. Trey Lance needs some glasses. I, I don't know what else to tell you. He gets the double-digit picks on the season at this point. From the three, kind of slipping inside. I mean, I once again, I get they got some really big injuries for themselves. Two linemen, two running backs, and they're a running team, but they should be playing better than this, it would seem. And once again, I know we're elite. We're better than we put on, but this is a, a surprising back-to-back -back kind of situation. Oh, Lord. Nice move. Nice stiff arm. Does he get it? Oh, my. He really is him, though. What can I tell you? He really is him. I'm going to go with bench as they kind of are ready for the run on this one. And fans. Oh, my. Look at him go! 87 yards! Pre-snap, I figured there was a blitz. I tried to get a quick throw to the left. It wasn't there. We had just enough time. And before he even made the break, without the safety help, the leverage was ridiculous for Fance. He did the rest. The ball was perfect. And surprisingly, it wasn't a blitz. It just 
brought up the safeties. I don't know what else there's what else to say about it. Every other player, to my knowledge, was pretty much perfectly covered. I guess Metcalf as well was pretty open, but the cornerback here, I mean, he plays it well, and then as soon as Fant's breaking, he just like he just slows down. It's like passing off to the safety who just isn't there. I also don't know what that safety is doing, but sure, we'll take it. Now, don't get me wrong. I don't want to set too high of expectations, but if these last two weeks are an indicator for anything at all, this could be a very good year for the Seahawks. Nice sackings. Sadly, won't actually count as a sack. Rank nine in takeaways, two on the day, both to Woolen. We know that's the one thing we do. We give a lot of completions and all that, but we do not break. We take the ball away. We stop scores in general, and Red misses another one, giving Lance, you know, a free run by and taking away more stats for himself, which, once again, in turn could lead to a loss of potential dev up. And that's a false start. Game also seemed to go by really quickly. Like, they really didn't force any incompletions from us. That should have been picked by Kalen Barnes, but it won't matter as we hit him late, him being Trey Lance with Puna Ford. It's safe to say, though, we are playoff ready. They, on the other hand, are not. And Wosu not making a play, and wow, Woolen is all over him there. I mean, just think what this would be like if we actually had best on best. We don't need a best on best we don't need to. Their offense is just abysmal. Red forcing the ball out, and there goes Mafe off the edge getting a sack. We take that. I mean, we're generating pretty much all base like pressure. You know, there's not any crazy blitzes coming out from us. And kind of caught running two routes into each other there. And that'll be a sack from Red on the Blitz. Getting some help off the edge with Kalen Barnes and Alexander and such chasing him away. Alexander going against Chark here. Why not? He's athletic. Open field Brooks. Couldn't really get the user I wanted to. Alexander chasing him down the field one-on-one. -on -one. That is into coverage. Almost picked by Jamal. Making the smart play with a swap. But Quentin Davenport now injured. Two interior uh, guys injured in this game. We'll see what the extent of those are. To the outside, there goes Kenneth picking up some nice blocks. Kenneth, I mean the safety, just chilling. Over 100 yards and two touchdowns. And I will say at this point, probably should have had the backups in, but yeah, it is what it is. Cap the drive off with a touchdown. And that's really good coverage. But Patterson still catches it and runs in for the score. This team can do no wrong. I mean, how does this look with an untouched rusher get a score? There was a chance at a pick. I mean, he barely gets it off. There's a chance at a pick. It's a terrible throw, obviously. Both going for the ball, but Patterson has better leverage, catches it, turns it upfield, scores. Untouched. All right, let's see what happens here. A coveted, uh, really solid drive turned into a forced ball in into the hands of Woolen, perhaps? Oh, that's a good read. That's a touchdown. That's a good read. Good touchdown. And it will be a massive blowout here in week 18. And once again, kind of coming out of immersion mode here a little bit. We do know teams like the Rams, teams like the Ravens, teams like the Niners and Sim, their playbooks, their schemes, for some reason, it's just not a viable way to win in the game. And obviously with our defense, we took advantage of that. They're, they're short passing and tons of run formations. Just won't cut it against our team, and if we have to face them again in the playoffs, I mean, kind of expect a similar result outside of, you know, if they get healthy, we get injured or something. I just don't see where they're going to be able to keep up with us on offense. You know, we put up 20-some points. Can they even score that many? I don't know. Of course, Rhett Grant came in and looked just as good as Trey Lance, if not better. Greer had a perfect game, four touchdowns passing. Kenneth Walker, 17 for 122 with two touchdowns. Greer didn't really run too much. Receiving Metcalf, 137 yards with two touchdowns. Patterson, uh, I think only needed like 18 or 20 yards to get to 1,000 yards. So obviously he did that. Fant only needed like 15. Moore needed over 100. Sadly, he got two catches for 32 yards and then got injured. So that really sucks, but what can you do about it? Defensively, uh, attackers for a loss. Red, he's just him. He's just him. Davenport had a sack. Red obviously had a sack. Mafe with a sack. Two picks for Woolen, who obviously we 
I mean, we know he's him. I mean, there's no question about that. Two upgrade points. Jacobson has one, which his catching isn't like the worst anymore. We need route running, but I'm going to keep going catching. He's not a guy that's going to have a whole lot of uh, reps, you know, where he's going to be the primary target. So when he does have that look, I want to make sure that he does actually catch the ball. And then once again, medium deep route is kind of the main look for Greer. Medium being the most. He gets two to short, one to deep. I mean, that's not really what we're looking for. But also another ability, which is, is that what, tight out, safety. I don't know which one he already had, but tight out's obviously really busted. So we'll take it. What was his other option? Wow, he had a, I mean, talk about getting good players, good options. I don't remember if we actually had a force safety valve, but we'll probably end up keeping those abilities. You know, we're going to do rerolls next episode with the stats and awards to see who won what. Uh, we had every single goal, which is beautiful, but... Uh, we'll you know take a look at that, but guys like Greer, where you know the two options are things that don't help him, I'm not gonna change those, right? Hot opponent, do we keep these boosts now? What's the story? Because obviously I don't really think about that, but maybe the boosts also played a factor. I want to show you guys the, uh, the the sliders. I'm telling you right now, there's there's a few sliver, there's a sliver amount of haters out there that think I I try to like put it on like not all Madden or I put the sliders to really help me. I'm telling you right now, if I could have it where I literally struggle to even get a pass to a player, I'll put it on. I'll put it on. I don't care. I just really think EA has made a product that just no matter what the sliders are, it will not play realistically enough. You know, the only thing I can think of that would make it really hard on me would just be an unrealistically, which would be to drop the QB accuracy, drop the pass blocking to like zero, which, I mean, I will drop it a little bit because we probably are hitting cat, you know, too many plays. Pass blocking, I feel like, I mean, I dropped it a little bit. I feel like it's already, you know, pretty low. Run blocking, I mean, how much lower do I need to put it? Uh, these sliders, I've tried, you know, pass defense, reaction time, and pass coverage different types of things common you know you know very consistently and it just doesn't seem to change anything whether the the pass reaction time is on 100 pass coverage on 100 both are at zero one's at 100 the other's at zero whatever it is there's no combination that makes it difficult i don't know what it is like some like in man coverage the ai is almost nearly locked down in zone coverage they're just dumb and you can pick them apart it's just crazy but yeah if you have sliders that are unbearably hard let me know and maybe we'll take a look at them for the playoffs i mean i'd rather lose by you know a few points in the playoffs than to win by 50 against you know a team that should be keeping up with us once again like we said with the teams like the niners rams and ravens uh those specific teams playbooks and schemes make it very hard for them to actually do anything in sim oh, we already looked at this actually on adrenaline rush area in gameplay because you know once again they're, they're super consistently short you can bring everyone up not even have to worry about deep very often and you know it makes it pretty easy but that's gonna be it next episode will be oh i didn't even see it but it currently says that we're not actually the team did they actually still clinch wait doesn't it go by division record first like against each other did we just get scammed? 10 straight wins, by the way. <laughs> GG. Did we just get scammed out of the number one seed? I actually think we just got scammed out of the number one seed. Well, let's find out. So we should have a bye week when we sim this. Which, I mean, it should be. Okay, so we do. It was just messed up for some reason. Didn't change. But we did end up getting the number one seed. The Niners play the Vikings. If Washington beats uh, Dallas, which it doesn't seem like that's going to be the case, we uh, play them. So, I mean, there's a decent chance here that we end up actually playing San Francisco, like, right here. Which is kind of crazy to think. We go back-to-back -back against them. But regardless of the point, that is going to be it. We are going to look at the stats and awards next episode and uh, re-roll a lot of different abilities that just either aren't realistic or they're too OP and they aren't really deserved uh, so we'll do that with, you know, kind of a spinner. We'll do a, we'll do that, which should be kind of a lot of fun, actually, as well. A little bit of RNG. But, yeah, if you guys enjoyed this season, maybe leave a like. Subscribe if you're new. If you're not new, really appreciate your continued support. And uh, no matter what happens in this uh, season, you know, this playoffs, we're going to play another season. Whether that's a disappointing loss out the gate or a Super Bowl win, 
You know, I kind of want to build this into a dynasty. So if we win, we are play another season, try to win another Super Bowl. If we lose, obviously we're going to play another season. Wow, number three quarterback, John Kuhn. Uh, you know, obviously we want to win a Super Bowl to start. So we'll see what happens there. But this looks promising. I want the sliders, you know, as hard as possible. So maybe somebody, someone comes out with some crazy sliders and we end up losing that first game. But love to have the bye week. Love to beat the Niners to win the division in general. Uh, and look at those team ranks. Oh, my. Oh, my. But that's about it. Thanks for watching. Hope you guys come back for next episode. But until next episode or video, see ya.